Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you. Always a pleasure to welcome Sharon Eslich from the Maslin Women's Club to be with us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Gosh, what a year you've had. It has been a whirlwind. It has. I can't believe it's October I know. and the year is going to be almost over. It's been pretty crazy all year. For somebody who might be new in town, tell me, remind me, what's so special about this particular year and the Mass Women's Club? Well, this year we celebrate our 100th year anniversary. Uh, our official first meeting was in September of 1919. So 2019, we've been celebrating the entire year, starting out with our tea in February, the daffodil luncheon, the rose luncheon, and then coming up next week, um, actually this week, mm -hmm. um, the autumn luncheon, and then a few more events, and then our year will be over. But Amazing. it doesn't mean our events are over. We still have a lot more planned in 2020, too. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep on going. Well, yeah, let's keep on celebrating 100 mm -hmm. years. It's interesting that it's a double anniversary, the Maslin Women's Club itself, and also that building that people call the Maslin Women's Club of Five Oaks, Five Oaks. celebrating an anniversary as yes. well. But ironically, Five Oaks this year is 125 years old. Uh, it was completed in 1894. The family moved in in November. And so this coming November will be the official 125th year of our beautiful Five Oaks home. Mm -hmm. For people who have not been in it and have not attended anything in it. My goodness, first of all, where have you been? And <laughs> second, tell tell us a little bit about what you find, some of the surprises that you find when you walk inside. I think in all the years I've been with the Massive Women's Club, my absolute favorite moment is when somebody walks in for the first time. Uh, especially if they're from the Maslin Canton area where right. they've lived here their entire lives and they maybe have heard of Five Oaks but just didn't bother coming in or they might have heard of it and said, oh, it can't be that great. And they'll walk in the door and it's kind of like the first time you go to New York City or something, you start looking up and then you start looking everywhere and your mouth's hanging open and it's just like, oh my goodness. Um, and whether it's a child who calls it a castle or mm -hmm. it's an adult, um, every age group, every gender, everybody finds something that I love about that club and yeah. about the home. Um, you know, the Tiffany window in the Great Hall is remarkable. The mm -hmm. woodwork is remarkable. Uh, the walls with the gold and the silver, everything is just so unbelievable. And, you know, I've always heard it called the gem of Maslin, jewel of Maslin, and very biased, but I do think it is. It is just a remarkable home that, thank goodness, is intact yes. from where it started out 125 years ago. It's like our own Downton Abbey, isn't it? I think so. And now that the movie's come like out, it, it's kind of reinvigorated all that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I hear what you're saying because I was, during the cookie walk last Christmas, I was in front of a young man who had always lived in Madison all of his life, and he said, I came to the cookie walk today because I I've never been inside this home. Yes. And I just had to see the inside. And he was just, as you say, just marveling at every single thing he looked at was just amazing and blew his mind. Yeah, it's always fun to do it, you know, and the kids are great because they just think the house looks so big. I remember my first time when I was four years old, I thought it was a castle and I thought so it was I. huge. Um, I thought the staircase went on forever and ever. When you come back <laughs> as an adult, it's a little bit smaller than that, but it's just amazing nonetheless. And yes. everybody can find something to fall in love with in that home. I think every time you walk in, you see something you didn't notice before. I have not stopped finding something new every single time. I want to yeah. go back, though, mention Autumn Luncheon, because oh, yes. someone might be saying, oh, cool, I want to go to that. Well, sorry, it sold out in how fast? It sold out in 24 hours. <laughs> so, um, we've yeah. been doing most of our events, have been selling out within the first day or so. Um, we had a lot of disappointed people this year. Uh, this time, we had to reduce the number of reservations by a little bit, because um, the current elevator that we have in hasn't been very reliable, mm -hmm. and we didn't want to make people walk that third floor floor. So we pulled everything down to the first floor, which reduced the number of seating. Uh, but we were packing everybody in. So I hope everybody's patient with being bumper to bumper, elbow to elbow. Uh, but yeah, we sold out in 24 hours. However, if I can put a little plug in. Please do. Um, that is program is the history of the Mass and Women's Club. Mm -hmm. To coincide with it, we will be showing and premiering our video on the history of the club 
But if you can't see that and be attend, we will have, um, actually we do have, a history book available. Um, we had our historian work on it this past year along with one of our other members. They put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this book. It's about 50 pages long, so it's not tiny. Wow. It has an incredible history about the women of Maslin and over the last 100 years, and it's only $5. Oh my. So if you want to stop by and grab a book or if you happen to be around, not only to see Five Oaks, but uh, get the history book, and it will be available not only now in October, but through our holiday season. So whenever you come in, and hopefully you will, uh, that book will be available if you're interested. Oh, what a nice gift for someone, too. And my goodness, how economical can you get? We Again, we do everything we do at the Women's Club, we try to keep it affordable. That's one of the tenants we have from when the girls gave us the home, the sisters gave the home to the club, that we always keep things affordable. And again, that's what we do with this. Well, before we move on, let's park there a second, because people who may not belong to the Women's Club that would love to, let's say, have a wedding shower or a baby shower or even have their wedding there, can they do that? Absolutely. You do not need to be sponsored. Um, any person anywhere in Stark County, Ohio, wherever. Um, I've actually booked two events out of Texas that they've been My. up in this area. So you can just give me a call, stop by, make an appointment. And we do a lot of baby showers, wedding showers, weddings, ceremonies, receptions. The ballroom's incredible for the dancing. Uh, we do business events. We just had a church have a retreat there last Saturday. So it's just one thing after another that we can perform, we can do there. We do our own catering. And again, all of our pricing and everything is extremely reasonable. And I'm not just saying that on my own. I know from what people remark when I tell them the prices. Oh, that's right. I mean, I will stand by that. The catering is amazing. The food is amazing. And the prices are always astounding. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Uh, well, we do a lot of volunteers. Um, our members do a lot of volunteering. We do have a staff that works. We have our own chef and everything. Um, you know, salaries are low. <laughs> and, um, but we just make sure we you know, work really hard uh, to keep everything as affordable as possible. Our thing is we would rather have people enjoy our home mm. than not. So the more people that can come in and have an event there that will make it memorable for the rest of their lives is really important to us. I think of any house always needs stuff done to it. Constant. <laughs> it's a house. They're always screaming for things to be done to them. How in the world do you keep that building looking so immaculate and clean and fresh and beautiful? And, you know, even with, you know, my goodness, those are <laughs> old walls and old, cool ceilings. Well, 15,000 square feet is a little daunting to keep yes. clean. Uh, we do have one gentleman, our a maintenance gentleman, who does keep everything as tidy as you see it. Um, our women do come in periodically and help clean the silver and do things like that. Um, and we all kind of chip in together to do it. The Women's Club, um, we, even though we no longer own the home, the Maslin Heritage Foundation does. Mm -hmm. um, the Women's Club, actually, one of the reasons we do our catering is because we pay for all the utilities, the general up keep the insurance, uh, all the day-to-day, -day, the landscaping, the snow removal, which is hopefully won't be coming up too quickly, <laughs> oh, and all of that. And then the Maslin Heritage Foundation, who we formed uh, to take care of the major parts of the home. They're responsible for things like the roof, the boiler, and that sort of thing. So it takes a huge effort to do it. And you're right, the home, every time I walk in, it's like, pay attention to this or that. Uh, but we do. It's you know, one of the things we work so hard for. Uh, when people ask me about philanthropic, um, my basic answer is the home is one of our biggest philanthropics. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Just to hold on to that. Um, the one thing I don't ever want to see is that house to be salvaged or taken apart or oh, something. Right. So the women work really hard to keep it up. I've never seen dust. <laughs> And there are a lot of wooden crevices throughout. Okay, and just I keep your blinders on. Never don't seen look. <laughs> dust. It's phenomenal to me. Thank um, you. As you mentioned, uh, philanthropic. Yes, that's part of it. That's part of the philanthropy is the preservation of that incredible home. Yes. But also, all the sections kind of have their own philanthropies as well. Yes, the club has an overall philanthropic that we do, and then what we call our sections, which are special interest groups that meet, like a history group, a literary group. Uh, they all do their own philanthropic 
philanthropic, uh, whether it's baking cookies for a group at Christmas, our chorus goes and sings at the nursing homes, we do can drives for Salvation Army and things, we support domestic violence, Pegasus Farms, uh, and I can go on and on. I think in our history book we named like 40 or 50 different organizations that over the years we've supported. Um, and, and that so is many, big a big part of it. Absolutely. So many going on simultaneously. Yes. Yeah. That's that's just phenomenal. A lot of women's clubs will choose something and that will be their focus area, but you've got multiple focus areas all being addressed at the same time. It's really well, pretty cool. With over 400 members, yeah. we can kind of spread ourselves out a little <laughs> bit and everybody has their own special interests and everything. We encourage that and we encourage even more. We'd like to do a little bit more um, even out in the community and there's some other things we're talking about getting involved in. So always thinking ahead. Every one who is involved with a nonprofit organization just heard you say that and went, what? I must have heard that wrong. <laughs> How many members, active members, do you have right now? Uh, 400. That is amazing. Um, I mean, very um, to be to be commended, for one thing. <laughs> and really? also, a lot of folks are a little bit jealous right now because, mm. you know, volunteer organizations are having a hard time keeping people yes. engaged and active and involved. How do you do mm. that? Um, I think the house is a big attraction, to be quite honest. Cool. I mean, people walk in and they want to be involved. They love our luncheons and the things that we do when they come to them. Frequently, members will, women will join because they like to see what we're doing. Uh, members like what we're doing with the philanthropy and these things. And just some of the interest. Um, you know, if you like to cook or do th certain things, you have common interests with everybody that comes through it. So it's kind of easy to get people to join. Um, unfortunately, you know, with our, some of our members aging, we lose members also. So we're always out there looking. Um, membership f dues are very inexpensive, $70. Mm -hmm. That attracts people because mm -hmm. it's affordable to do that. And so there's a lot of things I think we're doing right that attracts people. Um, on a side note, about a year ago when I started putting together the 100-year celebrations, um, I'd actually contacted the National Federation of Women's Clubs, which I didn't even know existed before that. <laughs> and I think at one point in our early, early years, we might have belonged to the group. Uh, they're a little out of our financial ability to join at this point. Mm -hmm. But when I was talking to them, um, their dues are based on number of members. Oh my. And I'm like, is there a break for like a certain number? And they're like, no, it's just per. And they said, why? How many members do you have? And I said, well, 400. At that time, it was a little over 400. <laughs> and they're they like, what? Well, what large metropolis are you from? <laughs> Maslin, and Ohio. I couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, uh, Maslin, Ohio, population 32,000. Right. <laughs> and the lady's like, you're kidding me. And she led me to believe that we were probably one of the largest women's clubs in the nation that they knew of or they oh, ever heard of. I would bet so if I were a better. that was really nice to do, hear that. Oh, my goodness, yes. No, we're I all mean, happy with that. Because who's not a member? I mean, really, <laughs> it, you know, if you live in Madison, you're a member of Madison Women's Club. Well, if you're couple, not, right? please join. Yeah. <laughs> That was my next question. Do you do membership drives, or is there something coming up, or how does someone join? Um, they can stop by. They can give us a call. Uh, when they come to a luncheon or one of our open houses or something, they can join then. There's always a membership envelope on the one Tiffany table, and or they can talk to any one of us. We welcome anyone. Um, and the one important thing is members are not required to do anything anything in particular. They can, some members we have literally do nothing maybe one year and overdo the next year. Mm -hmm. Some don't. Some are involved in what we call our sections. Some aren't belong to any of them. Everybody contributes and does what they feel comfortable with. We don't have any requirements other than just enjoy the fellowship, the sisterhood, mm -hmm. and the and the women's club. And that's mm -hmm. all there is. Love it. We are speaking with uh, Sharon Eslick. She is, what is your title there at the Mass Women's I'm Club? She's the manager. Manager. <laughs> I think you love the whole caretaker. You are the head honcho, the oh. person that you need to go to if you want to know anything about the Mass Women's Thank Club. Um, many other organizations also borrow it to be able to do their own events as well. Yes. And that's also something to keep in mind. The My favorite, the Princess Tea, <laughs> uh, not to be missed, is just always amazing. And I think until my granddaughter is way too old to, <laughs> to do that, we I'll have to just find somebody else to take to it because I'm going to still want to go. Good, yes. It's just an amazing, amazing place. 
It's special, and we're going to find out about some of the amazing things taking place yet this year around all of the holidays after these words. You're listening to Our Community.